wherever you are. God is really your strength. I want you to just say it to Him in words. You know, we sing it, but there's power when we also say it. I want to just say to God right now, right here, you are my strength. You are my strength. Can we just make that confession? Lord, you are my strength. Strength like no other. You are my strength. Whatever I go through, in the morning, in the evening, whatever I go through, Lord, you are my strength. Lord, you are my strength. Father, it's our confession this evening that you are our strength. It's our song, it's our testimony, it's our word for now and for tomorrow that you are our strength. We worship you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. What a time, what a song. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, let, let's go to the Word of God. Don't forget we started um, the Evolve series. Uh, I want you to just, um, if you're watching us online, I want you to like our pages, The Energized Church, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever it is, just follow that channel uh, so that you don't miss out. In case you were not here last week, you can still get the message for last week. And then um, today I'm excited about God's Word, and I'm sure His Word will distill upon our half. Amen. All right, Psalms 139, and I'll read 13 to 16. Psalm 139, 13 to 16. I'll be reading from the Passion Translation, and so I'm going to read it passionately. Praise God. The Bible says, You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place, carefully, skillfully shaping me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I would ever see the light of the day, the numbers of your day, of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. So this evening, I'm going to be speaking on your unused assets. Your unused assets. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Because the entrance of your word give light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we come tonight to learn at your feet. Make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life even upon the spirit of man. After now, Lord, make us better people. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, you can have your seats. So pleasurable to be in church with you. All right, so your unused assets. Today I want to speak on something I believe is quite important. Uh, uh, our used, uh, unused assets. What is an asset? An asset is a useful and valuable thing or person. An asset is a resource with economic value. That an individual, a corporation, a country owns or controls with the expectation that it will provide a future benefit. An asset, therefore, is anything of value, any resource of value that can be converted into cash. That's what an asset is. So an asset, we can say, is anything resource useful or valuable. Any resource, anything or resource that is useful and valuable examples of assets owned by individuals, governments, or corporations include stocks, vehicles, furniture, or what it's called in business parlance uh, PPE, property, plants, and equipment. There are assets that are highly visible. That means you see it. When someone has cars, houses, it can't be hidden. You see it. So you can say, Oh, that's a big boy. That's a rich guy. Why? Because they are highly visible. Either because, but you see, there are assets that are not so visible. Everyone you have ever met has assets hidden inside of him. They are not so visible, because, but they are still a source of blessing. They are valuable. They are things that can be converted to economic value. And those are the things we go around with. Many people who you say and term poor, they are working masses of riches. But they do not just know how to convert the assets to money or assets to what they need. Either because they are ignorance of them, or because they don't know how to use them, 
or they are ignorant of the values that these assets can give to them. That's why I love Psalm 139 that we started with. I love the fact, I love the way the Passion Translation put it. It says, God skillfully shaped and awesomely wired us. He said he saw the end even before it came forth. So God intrinsically look at you, put all the things together, your skills, your abilities, uh, your talents, he put it together. Why? Because he saw an end even while he was creating you. So he made you with the end in mind. Therefore, everything you will ever need. Bible says uh, he carefully and skillfully shaped us from nothing to something. When I saw that, I was excited. You saw, you saw who you created me to be before I became me. That's powerful. He saw it before I even became. Before I came forth and they celebrated and they named me. God saw it, saw me in the matrix of the womb. Even before then, he knew what he was sending me for. So he shaped you for that purpose. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Paul writing in that same light. Paul had that understanding. He said, we are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. We are God's workmanship. Isaiah 49 verse 1. He says, let this say on the island that God has called me by name even while I was in the matrix of my mother's womb. And he said the same thing in Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1. He called Jeremiah a prophet to the nations even before he was born. God has equipped us and given us assets that will make living the life he planned for us possible. These assets are not like the physical assets men can see. They are the intangible forces that makes us who we are. We are blessed and wired by God. This asset is what we call potentials. Permit me to move on here and say that God has not created anyone empty. Mediocrity, mediocrity is not the language of heaven. Emptiness is not the vocabulary of creation. You are made to make a difference. God designed every man to walk in the fullest of his potential. God wants you to be extraordinary. Mediocrity, average, was never anything God intended. There are no extraordinary men. There are only men who have discovered and devised a means of maximizing their potential. There are no extraordinary men. If you see a man who is making sense, a man who is living the life you want to live, it's because he has found out a way in which he can maximize that gift that God has put on his inside. Potential. People may tell you you don't have it. Some people may tell you you have a lot of it. And some people may tell you you are wasting years. Or that you have none. Yet few people really know what potential is. And even fewer realize that discovering your potential allows you to change your life. Redefine your destiny. And change your life in the process of developing your potential. So what is potential? Potential comes from the root word potency and potent. And refers to all the things you can be successful at if you develop it. It talks about potency. It tells you about the things uh, that if you work on it, you can, be, you can be successful at it. Oh, you can be successful at it if you develop your gift, uh, if you develop your skills, your natural abilities. Those are the things called potential. Tonight, I want to focus on your personal potential. And so what is your personal potential? Number one, the activities and tasks you can excel at. There are activities, tasks that you can excel at. Your hobbies your spirit, your relationship, that you can be great at. What are the activities that you can be great at? It can be speaking, it can be writing. Number two, the best thing you can become. Talks about the person. When we talk about personal potential, it talks about the person you can become. Some people say, I can become a revivalist. Somebody say, I, I can become an entrepreneur. I can become a business magnet. Th those are the things you know you can become. Your social status, the fame you can attain. And then number three, what is possible for you to achieve? That's talking about your potential. What is possible for you to achieve? Uh, your goals, your wealth, uh, honors, awards, as well as the impact you can make in your world. Your potential, therefore, is your possibilities. It's your possibilities. It is time for you and I to switch on our light. It is time to stop lying dormant. It is time to take charge of our destiny. It is time to unlock the infinite possibilities on our inside. There are possibilities on the inside of every one of us. But it is time for us to actually unlock it. It's time for you to let your light shine. It's time to switch on your light. You know, many times we look at the gifts and the blessings of other people and we celebrate them. I remember those days growing up in church. When I see people sing, I say, wow, what a gift. And then the person now modulates, I say, Jesus. You know, you have a way of seeing the blessedness in others without seeing that which is in you. 
And you know we live in a time and in a season that for you to actually live the life God expects of you, you have to actually ensure that you maximize what God has given you. You need to celebrate yourself. And that's why when I started, I talked about Wired for Greatness last week. And today we are talking about our unused assets. Thomas Edison said, if we did all the things we are capable of doing, we will literally astound ourselves. If you do the things we are capable of doing, even you, you will be surprised. Therefore, your greatest asset is not on your outside. It's on the inside. The greatest asset is within you. A wealthy man once said, take away all I have. And in a matter of years, how we have it all back again. Why? Because what made him him uh, is on his inside. It's not what you see. It is not the properties. It's not the visibles. It is the invisible that created the visible. Listen, it is working on the invisible that you will see tangibilities in your life. The greatest treasure is not on the it's not on the outside, it's not the inside. Stop looking outside, look within. You are preciously wired for greatness. I believe post-COVID, people that will make it in the world are people who are going to be evolving, who are going to be developing and maximizing, fully using that which God has given them. And so that's why I want to teach certain principles here tonight. Principles uh, for unleashing, principles for maximizing your asset, that asset you have on your inside, that wiring you have inside of you. How can I develop it? What, can, what do I need to do? Number one, you need a knowledge of your gifts and talents. Proverbs 24, 3 to 4. Bible says, by wisdom a house is built. By understanding it is established. Uh, scripture told us that by knowledge are his chambers filled with every good thing. Uh, listen, if you will have good things in your life, uh, you will need knowledge. That's what scripture says. Everyone has received a gift from God. What are, you, what are your soft skills, your innate skills? Know them. Understand how you are made to function. Don't just eat, see it and wait for a miracle. Create your own miracle. Don't wait on it. Create your miracle. Use what you have. I remember that story of that woman. The Bible told us that a time of famine came and she went to Elisha. Elisha asked, what do you have in your house? God asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? It's always about what you have. It's not about what is on the outside. We need to look inward and begin to use what we have in order to change our life. God told me yesterday, many people are operating in less than I planned for them. They are underutilizing their gifts and underrating their possibilities. And I think that's powerful. Many people are operating in less than I planned for them. They are underutilizing their gifts and underrating their possibilities. Remember the children of Israel? They said, we look like grasshoppers. It's not like they interviewed those guys and asked, how do you see us? It was them. They said, we look like grasshoppers and so are we in their sight. That's, that's thinking you are nothing. I was telling him, I said, why didn't they think they were goats? I think that would have been better. I'll we'll probably say we are monkeys in front of them. What is a grasshopper? That's such a very small object. But that tells you about their esteem. How they saw themselves. You need to develop your self-esteem. It's like when you are driving a Lexus ES350 on a highway. And as you drive, and a tricycle overtakes you. The problem is not with the Lexus or the engine. The problem is with the driver. Listen, you have possibilities. The reason your life is the way it is, is not the problem of God. Many times we pray too much. Uh, the problem is not with God. Like the problem of that driver is not with the engine. Uh, the problem is not with the creator. The problem is with you. The next time you see the mirror and see that the problem is the person you are seeing in the mirror and the solution is the person in the mirror, you are halfway done to getting answers. Know how you are made to function. Isaiah 5.13, my people enter captivity for lack of knowledge. Isaiah 4.6, uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Proverbs 19.2, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. Uh, listen, knowledge is the key to living a life uh, that God wants you to live. You need to search out information. Know your gift. Uh, oh, then shall you know if you follow to know. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 3. Many people are called to preach, but they know nothing about preaching. Many people are called to start businesses, but they know nothing about the business. Uh, many people are called to entertain, uh, but they know nothing about entertainment. Uh, and they keep praying and God is looking at them uh, oh what else do you want me to do one of the most crucial key to unleashing your potential is knowledge nothing actually limits us like knowledge number two you need diligence in your gift the word diligence means constant effort being attentive and persistent in accomplishing something many of us start out but we give up so soon 
You need to just keep by your head on it. You need to lock in. Have that bulldog tenacity. Just say, except God does it, I'm not living. You can't be a jack of all trade in the arena of life. You need to just ensure that you do all you can to ensure you win. People are not successful today because not because they don't have talent. It is because uh, they don't use their talent. Remember the parable of the talent. 25 uh, of Matthew, 14 to 30. The story was told us. One man was given one talent. He buried it. How many of us are burning our talent? Why we stand and celebrate the talent of others? Glory to God! <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo! Hey! Zogabak! We celebrate! Why we stand and do nothing? Attainment is not an automatic slot. It is something you must work for. Indolence is one of the problems of our generation. Laziness is the problem of our generation. You sleep until your eyes is tired. Somebody, I told someone, how long have you been sleeping? He said, I, 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 you know, this is, I'm just sleeping. In fact, my back is paining me. She slept to the extent that her back was paining her. Remember, it is not really... What you do when we talk about diligence is how you do it. I tell people diligence is not hard work. None of you can pray to be hard working. When you go to Bodija Market in Ibadan, or you go to Ipata Market in Ilori, and you see hard workers, some guys who carry 50 kgs of rice, sometimes 100 kg, they are working so hard. After they help you with some carrying for about a kilometer, 500 meters, you give them 50 naira, 100 naira. That is not hard work. That is hard work, but that's not what you need. You need diligence work. You need to diligence work talks about the how you work. It's not about the work, it's about the how of the effort. It's not about just working, it's about a how of the effort. Listen to this. I used to tell people this: you can't cut the vision of your life while dreaming, but be sure you will never achieve it while dreaming. It's not possible. You need to work. Greatness will cost you something. There's a price for being a champion. There is a price. You must pay it. And then number three, faithfulness in little. Many of us are waiting to become big stars. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you know, I see people now in this generation, they just, wow, wow. See the way that man preaches. I, have the, I can do it. I can do it. Shut up. Start where you are. Try and preach to five people and see that they didn't sleep. Before you start saying that you can preach and maintain 10,000 people. You know, we, we want to do something. We don't appreciate little beginnings. We do not value what we have today. We need to celebrate where we are today on the way to where we are going. I know you are bigger than this. Yes. But be faithful in that which God has committed into your hand. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 2. Scripture told us uh, that Moses was faithful in all his house. And 3 5. He said he was faithful to him that called him. Listen. You have to understand that faithfulness is key. Like Mother Teresa said, God has not called us to be famous. He has only called us to be faithful. You and I need to be faithful. Faithfulness in your gift. Proverbs 25 verse 19. Say, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. I don't know whether your tooth has ever pained you before. The faithfulness in an unfaithful, in an unfaithful man. Trust in an unfaithful man. He says it's like broken tooth. That's serious. That's, that, that's actually a level of pain. Are you serving in a place? Be faithful. Are you a doorkeeper? Be faithful. Do it well. Remember Nehemiah. He was a cup bearer in the house of the king. Remember. Just be faithful. Listen to this. God is not looking for Sussex intoxicated folks. He's merely seeking for tenaciously faithful people. He's not looking for those who are just driven by being famous. He's just looking for those who are faithful. Check your Bible. Read your Bible. It is not the gift of men that made way. It is the faithfulness to God. You must just be faithful to God. He will check your heart. He will test your heart. Let him find you faithful. Number four, overcome your fear and failures. Fear, false evidence appearing real. That's the acronym fear. Fail, first attempt in learning. If you fail a second time, call it second attempt in failing. Sail. Anytime, Todd, you do it again, find another name for it. Call it tail. Third attempt in learning. Oh, you do it the fourth time, call it fail again. Is the fourth attempt in learning. If you fail the fifth time, call it fail. Is the fifth time. And then you go the sixth time, call it sail. Just keep calling it a name. Because it's just learning how it should never be done. Listen to this, failure is not final, success is not finished. It is what you do about it that matters. 
Many times we expect to do things for the first time. And you want to sound, uh, you want to sing for the first time, guys. <laughs> and I see people who want to sing uh, and sound like Travis Green. They want to sound like Todd Dulani. They want to sing for the first time. Uh, and they want to go on the high pitch. <laughs> Say, ah! Mahalalaya. Keep quiet. Listen. Every man has a process. Any success story that is not a story of process. Uh, it is not a true success story. That's a Yahoo boy in the making. Listen. I know folks who want to write the first book and they want to be, to be a sellout. They want to be a Wallace in Kachimanda Adich. First time. It doesn't work that way. You wrote a Christian book. You want to sell out like Miles Moreau. I bow my head for you. Let's face fact and truth. You write your first book, you will give people out. You will sing your first CD, you will give it out. If it is the days of tapes, people will collect it and record another song on it. It's called process. It's called life. Everybody will blow, but it's not the first try that makes them blow. If not, you will just blow out like a bomb. It's a process. Put the downers down. Show how to great height. You are a winner. You are a light. Daniel eleven thirty two. You are a child. Furnished after the stability of the palace. Don't forget and forget. For, don't, don't mind whatever anyone says to you. Keep at it. You will always win. Overcome the fear of failure. Everybody fails one time or another. And that's the truth of life. But people don't tell you that. They just tell you their success story. And many times you don't even ask. You just see the success story. You don't ask about the failure. And then number five, share your potential. The principles of the kingdom are different from the king principles of the world. The world says, get all you can, sit on the can and seal the can. Praise God. But the kingdom says, everything you have, share it. It is in sharing it that you have more. Proverbs eleven twenty four. Put the breath upon the water. So you will find it after many days. Multiply. Give, it shall be given unto you. Luke 6, 38. Good measure. Press down, shaking together. Understand that the secret of more is in giving. Do not seek to be blessed alone. Seek also to be a blessing. You want better platform? Share the one you have. You want to sing new songs? Share the one God gave you. You want more anointing? Use the one he has given you. Lay hands on people. Impart on others. Oh, Paul said in Romans 1, 11, he said, I want to come to you and I may share with you the, the anointing of God. Jesus shared with the disciples. His disciples shared with others. Others shared with thousands. And that's why we are the stories of people who are sharing. Will you today be the small child? Who gave Jesus five loaves of bread and came back and, it, and had 12 baskets of SS left. That's sowing great seed. Listen to this. What you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. This kingdom is built on sharing. Christ didn't need the cross. Did not need the cross to become the son of God. He didn't need it because, to become saved or to become an heir of the kingdom. It was all these and more. He went to the cross to share all of this with us. Remember, little is much if God is in it. You don't need great gift or ability. You just need the presence of God. Tell somebody you need the presence of God. And then number six, you must have the absolute backing of God. <laughs> Titus 2.11, the Bible says the grace of God bringing salvation has appeared to all men. John 1.16, of his fullness have we received grace for our grace. Verse 17 says the law came through Moses. Grace and truth came to our Lord Jesus Christ. When God will back up your potential, what God does is God gives you the tangibility of grace. So your, your potential will not get the results you need or you want without the backing of God. You need God's backing. You need grace. God did not create you or send you here to fail. He's with you and he will help you. One basic equipment of God for every one of us is grace. Listen to this. The success story of everyone is not complete. If there is no great story. If anybody ever shared their story of success with you. And you can think it. You can, you can, you can imagine how it works. Uh, and it seems to be works. Then it is not God. God will always walk his walk. And put his tangibility there. You will see his footprint. Uh, and God's signature and footprint is grace. Grace will always be there. What is grace? Grace is the God factor. So you can sing. But your singing will not go anywhere if grace does not come. Oh, so you can preach. Preach fire. If God does not come, you will just be spitting on people. Listen, grace is the backing of God. 
oh, you have fresh ideas. Oh, you, you think if your idea will just work, you will have the biggest company in town. Praise God. If grace does not come, nobody will buy your product. You need God. You need God. It is the essential for attaining greatness. Do not forget that you shall never be the only one with your kind of gifts. Only God can make you better than others. Or only God can make you the sought after. Grace is the greatness of God expressed in the pettiness of men. The greatness of God expressed in the pettiness of men. Grace is God's utmost ability expressed upon mortals. Grace is the difference maker. Grace is the divine supplement. Today I pray for you. May you find grace in God's sight. May you find grace in God's sight. Remember, God does not just instruct us. He empowers us. And then finally, you must have absolute confidence in God. And that's faith. You know, I said God's backing, that's grace. Absolute confidence in God, that's faith. You will never achieve anything in life. You will never be able to use your asset. Your unused assets is faith. You have not used faith to the level God wants you to use it. You have not even begun to scratch the possibilities of faith. It is time for us to begin to use it. Faith, not only faith in God, but faith in you. Do you understand that? You must have faith in you. Faith in your potential. Faith in what God has given you. Faith in the possibilities God has put inside of you. This kingdom operates by the instrumentality of faith. You will not get anything genuinely done in this kingdom except by the power of faith. Faith is the currency of this kingdom. Finally, understand that you cannot unlock or unleash your potential. If you will, by yourself alone. If you will, you will need God's backing. That's grace. And you will need to have faith. You can move mountains if you have faith. God hasn't instructed us to do what he hasn't empowered us to do. The impossibilities you see is merely because you are still in the land of unbelief. Tell your neighbor the impossibility. is because you are yet in the land of unbelief. Say, come on! Come on! Let's go to the land of faith. Why? Because conquerors dwell in the land of faith. Conquerors live in the land of faith. Have a dogged assurance in your possibilities. Be sure that God cannot lie. He has created you to be great. Someone need to get home tonight and say to himself, oh, if you're watching us, you need to stand up right now and say, oh, I am greatness. They say, what is the definition? I am greatness. I am is in me. He has empowered me. He has equipped me. I am. I can do all things. That's what Paul said. Not some things. Not the things I believe. All things. Not the things the world will not doubt about me. All things. It does not matter your opinion. I can do all things. Let me give you five conclusions. Like I always do in this series. Five conclusions. Number one. Never settle for anything less than what God has in store for you. Never. God told you, I'm going to give you a Lexus. God told you, you are going to build a company. Don't settle for less. Don't drive a B2. Don't drive a Gallant. Are you listening to me? Don't settle for anything less. Return anything back. To, tell them, I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. It does not matter whether you believe it or not. I am on my way to better day. Someone say, I don't know how the end will end for us. 2020, I don't know. I know. <laughs> he crowns the year with his goodness. Hey! He says, it will increase my greatness. Ay, 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 ay. Don't settle for less. Number two, don't have the Jonah complex. What is the Jonah complex? The Jonah complex defines anyone who is running from his life purpose. The Jonah complex defines anyone who is settling for a life less than that that God has ordained for him. Don't run away. No Jonah complex. Because if you have a Jonah complex, the fish of the world will swallow you. And then number three. Number three. Potentials are of no value until they become potent. It is not what we can become. It is what we have become. <laughs> nobody is ever celebrated for what they can become it is not a question of what you can become become it tell your neighbor become it it is about the becoming of it become it that's
That's what matters. I know up and coming stars. It is from the up and coming stars in the music world that we did not hear their name again. So people have been up and coming for the last 10 years. People will get tired of waiting. Up and coming footballers. They think they have great hope. Eventually they sold them because nothing could happen with them. Number four, very quickly. Expectation can make the art sick. The world won't wait on you forever. It is the reason some people fade out as up and coming stars. The world is saying, yes, we see your potentials. We see your possibilities. But if you don't turn the latent force to a kinetic force, you will soon be out. If you don't turn the latent force, the potential force to kinetic, you will soon be out in the game of life. It is time to act. You are becoming old. Tell your neighbor you are becoming old. He say, I'm a young, fresh boy. Tell him, yesterday, today you are older than yesterday. <laughs> That's something we don't like to hear. And finally, commit to living your best life now. That's the fifth thing. Commit to living your best life now. You must commit to it. And I know as you do that, grace abounds even unto you. Wherever you are, looking at us, close your eyes, bow down your head. And I want you to say, Lord, today I commit to living my best life now. Today I commit to living my best life now. Raise your right hand up and say, Lord, today I commit to living my best life now. I live in the fullness of my possibilities. I attain, I attain greatness. I use all the assets you have given me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever you are, if you do not know Jesus, we don't like to close our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. You know, the reason why we smile, laugh, and know tomorrow owed better things, uh, and have this confidence that we are created with gifts and assets, is because we know God. If you do not know God, you are not a partaker yet in this family of God. I want you to make a commitment for, to God right now. Many years ago, Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. He knew 2020 you will be living, and you would be worth dying for. He knew your name. He called you. Wherever you are, if you do not know Jesus and you are saying, you know what, I want today to be the beginning of a new experience with God, of a journey with God, I want you to put your hand on your chest and let's say this prayer together. Everlasting Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I confess I'm a sinner. Jesus, come into my heart. Spirit of a living God, fill me up let me be old let me be new thank you father thank you holy ghost because i'm a new creature all things are past all things are new we said that prayer it's a new day it's the beginning of your best days you can send us a message at the energized church at gmail.com or drop a comment we'd like to be part of your christian journey and your christian experience